Welcome to Showcase. What are we showcasing today? That's a great question. We're showcasing, of course, Brian Kelly, a shop owner that has his, I guess, life away from the shop is way more exciting than the life at the shop. So we're going to hear a little bit about that and how that works in. And we're going to talk about communication, the intent of your communication and possibly how it shows in your intention. But first of all, we want to go around the Zoom room, if you will. And first of all, I want to uh, hear from you in your in your business life. What's your biggest challenge right now? Uh, it could be small to somebody else. It could be large to you. So what is that challenge? And then also, uh, how many years have you been the owner of your business or in this business per se? So Kelly Bryant was the first one here. So I'm um, excuse me, Kyle. So if you'll, we'll start with you, sir. Um, yeah, things are going really well, actually. So I, I purchased the business I'm at about three years ago, and I've just been growing it and developing it ever since then. So I'm just always looking for different different stuff and new ideas. So um, we, we keep it real basic, and the guys are all fairly content and happy. So I just continue to foster that. So you're three years in. So did you buy an existing business? I did. Yep. Okay. So were yep. you working there or just bought it because it was for sale and you thought it was a good investment? Um, no, I've, I've been in the industry for a long time and then he was ready to okay. retire and he gave me a call and invited me over to come check it out. And long story short, we, we made it work out to where he could retire and I could start the, the new path with the ownership again. So here I am. Right. Sounds good. Thanks for being here, Kyle. All right. No yeah, thank, uh, you. thank you, Kyle. Uh, Micah Straub, uh, I grew up in the business. My parents started a shop uh, 50 years ago this this year. Uh, my brother and I bought it from them in 2010. And uh, we have, uh, like I said, it, right now 23 full-time employees. We have a mechanical shop, a collision shop, a rental car business, and also a detail shop. So we're, we're, we're on an island, so it it works well for, uh, for our uh, clientele. Wow, that's a that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> All right, so what what's your biggest challenge? Um, I have to say it's probably getting the not we have just working all the employees working together. Uh, you know, you get that many personalities, you're gonna have some disagreements. It's not it's not that it's hard or bad. It just it seems to be a uh, uh, you know something you deal with off more often than you want to sometimes. And it's not, it's, nothing's bad. It's not like they get in fights or anything. It's just, you, you get somebody's upset at something that happened and, you know, it, it's part, part of running a business. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and you know, that's the personal side of it and it's human. We, we're all mm -hmm. going to get those things going in our life and we're going to show out. We're going to show up somewhere and show out basically. Well, Stacy, what about yourself? Did you get the two questions or were you in early on enough to get that? I did. Um, so I have been in the business for a year and a half. So sounds like the newbie in the group. <laughs> okay. Um, it has been a, a great year and a half. We're actually, um, it's a new business. So we started it from the ground up and uh, the first year was incredibly successful. And we're now we're working. I would say our biggest challenge is really just, um, improving the processes and making incremental improvements and looking at um, where we've come and where we're going and where we can make those tweaks. And we're continually tweaking the processes and continually tweaking um, to make things better. And, and the, other, the other thing would be, I know you said the biggest challenge, but the other thing would be um, for us, it's, it's helping our employees grow too. So just making sure we're staying focused on that because that is the building the culture the right way was big when we when we started and we want to continue that as we move forward. Um, it's a uh, you know we we bought the franchise um, not because of the industry necessarily although that was um, that was part of it right because as a as a woman going into an automotive repair shop not always a great feeling. Um, okay. So we were we were customers first and then once we experienced. Uh, the brand and how good the brand was. Um, that was kind of our deciding factor to move it, move forward with, with a, a new location here in Buckeye. So um, that's where we're at. Okay. 
Good so deal. Stacey, Thanks, Stacy, for being here. Hey, yeah, Gary, go ahead, Brian. I just want to ask one question there. Stacy, how many sure. employees do you have out of curiosity? Uh, we have 16 full time and three part time. 16 full and three part time. Excellent. And, uh, and will you mention the uh, brand name? Would that be okay to ask? Oh, yeah. Christian Brothers Automotive. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. My pleasure. All right. So, Brian Gellis, tell us uh, what your biggest challenge is and how long you've been hanging around the automotive industry. Okay. So, I started my company. It'll be five years in February, uh, unit results. And I think my biggest challenge is shops getting purchased. <laughs> so, you know, I get some turnover you know, and I guess that's a good thing for those guys that want to hang up the spurs. Um, and so, yeah, that's probably my biggest challenge, figuring out how to scale um, and grow, you know, the company, you know. Um, prior to that, you know, I had 25 years. We uh, took a company from zero to worth over $100 million, one of the largest in the southeast uh, company. So, I, you know, that's where I kind of got all my experience from, from there. But, yeah. Okay, good, good, excellent. And uh, Brian Kelly, why don't you, what's your biggest challenge running your auto shop and also uh, how long you've been doing? Well, thank you, Gary. I appreciate it. So I've been doing it since uh, 2004. So going into my 21st year, um, man, you know, what are my biggest challenges? You know, I was, uh, I was thinking my biggest challenge this morning was internet because I'm, I'm in Wyoming on a fishing trip. And, uh, you know, when we, when we drag it back to, you know, what's my biggest challenge? Um, I, I think for me, the biggest challenge is, um, uh, being able to fit everything into my calendar. And, uh, you know, that's, that's always what I struggle with. I'm, I'm one of those guys who I I'm always thinking I'm always doing and, making sure that I itemize my day, line it out and get to all of the uh, commitments that I've either made, taken on or dreamed about. Uh, that's, that's always the piece for me is getting it, getting it all into that one, that, that, that one giant uh, piece that just, it, it flows. And, you know, I was just thinking about this. I, I'm here fishing. Um, I made sure I was ready for this meeting and then I'll be going out fishing again and, uh, I'll be out there till late afternoon. And, uh, I'll get up at four o'clock in the morning tomorrow and I'll drive all the way back to Idaho and then I'll jump over to Spokane and I'll present at a meeting for Nawaka, much like uh, Micah was talking about just a minute ago. So it's, it's making sure I have time to live, um, live well and enjoy my family, uh, enjoy my business, enjoy all of the relationships around me. And that, that goes from employees to um, good personal friends and family. And so for me, how do I, how do I have it all? Right. Yeah, you got a lot of balls in the air, and you actually own an automotive shop. And I'll and what we'll do is, if you'll go ahead and take off and and uh, carry us where you want to go, then well, I want I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to make a disclaimer. I've never owned an automotive shop. Don't plan to, but I've been around this business almost 48 years. And I've seen good shops, bad shops, really great places and all the problems that happen. And that's what got me into the coaching side of the business. I call in the shop owner and he say, man, we're having problems with this. Well, we got to solve that. And this just kept piling up. And that's where we got started uh, coaching businesses, shop owners in Houston, Texas, looking for those ways to make it better and get over the problems. So I'm here. Uh, founder and creator of Showcase. And so Brian Kelly is our Showcase event today. And you all are invited in. And hopefully he's going to share some words of wisdom that you've never heard in your life. And you'll walk away 10 times better than you can. How's that? So Brian? Gary. Well, Gary, thank you. I appreciate the introduction. I appreciate you giving us a little bit about yourself as well. Yeah, today's, uh, today's about communication. And, uh, you know, one of the, one of the things I love to say, whenever I talk about communication, um, the average person can process and hear 500 words per minute. We can speak 150. Now there's a, there's a major gap there. And, uh, what happens with that other 350 words, that space, right? Because if nobody's talking faster than 150 and we're capable of 500, something else is going on in there. And that's my investigation. 
It's what's happening in the space for the other 350. What internal conversations go on? And I don't know who's explored it, who hasn't, but that is what communication is about. And uh, I always say communication starts at the level of intention. And as I, as I look around this room, I think, okay, what was, what was the intention here today? What was the intention in this room? Why was I talking when I spoke up? Why, why was Gary talking? Why was Stacy talking? Why was Brian talking? Why was Kyle talking? What was the intention behind it? And, and did we stop long enough to even think about that intention? You know, are, you the, are you the person that uh, when you walk into a conversation, you just, I always call it the, 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 the vocal vomit. You just dump and everything comes out or do you or do you walk into a conversation and all right i'm actually coming over here to talk to him because i have a result that i want or do you walk into a conversation because you just want to connect or or maybe do you just not even think about it you just aimlessly walk in like maybe you do in life too i don't know there's a lot of that out there i don't have time to be unintentional so i have to be i have to be crisp and clear and I also find that if I'm not intentional in communication, nobody else knows what they get either. So I, I ask, and I'd love just a response from anyone here who, is there anything that you think of before you walk, engage in a conversation, before you walk into it, and before you engage, is there anything <clears throat> that you prepare yourself for? For me, it depends on the scenario. So um, typically, typically, if I'm having a conversation with my store manager about what's going on, I, I kind of outline what I want to get out of the conversation, or what I what my thoughts are going in. And then I intentionally will, he's, he's definitely a silent thinker. Like I can see the wheels turning when we talk. Um, so he doesn't give feedback right away. So I, I, I always try to go in thinking, give, be, be quiet for part of the conversation, let him process it, don't just keep charging forward, give him a chance to respond. And he may not respond right away, but just in that particular scenario, I, I try to make sure that I give him that space to do that. Um, so it's different depending on the conversation. So what I, what I heard from you is you're, <laughs> you're intentional to their response or how they process, right? Yeah, I try you to know. be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and in a situation where you know the person, right? Yeah. Awesome. I appreciate that. Thank I, you, Stacy. I, I agree with Stacy. It just depends on the you know what conversation you know you're going into. Some you prepare for, some you don't, and you got to be able to adapt halfway through a conversation too, because it may not go where you were thinking it was going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little preparation doesn't hurt anything, right? Yeah, Mike, I would I would agree with that 100. percent I, I would say that more times than not, it doesn't go where I think it's going to go. So, <laughs> just being willing to adapt and listen. Um, you know, I, I struggled with that a lot when I first went into this because I I had you know all my goals and all these things in my head of where where things needed to go and what I was trying to accomplish, and I really had to pull myself back and check my ego because I don't have all the answers and and just be prepared to listen because the guys, the guys definitely have great ideas and gals. And, and um, I, I, nine times out of 10, don't have the best answer. So that was something I definitely learned in this first year and a half. So that, I, I agree with you 100%. And, and sometimes you won't have the answer. You got to come back and say, I'll have to get back to you. We'll, we'll revisit this conversation later. It's, it, I, I don't want to spout out something that I regret it later. Or, you know, say something that's going to, why did I, why did I say I was going to do that? <laughs> you know, so, yeah. so I want, I want to point something out and uh, I'm talking about before the conversation, right? And notice where you guys went and we're going to talk more about this. This is why I'm pointing it out. Notice that, notice that you're already into the conversation. Know that, notice that you're creating stories about the conversation. Notice that there's, there's more going on inside there before, during, and after when the conversations happen. And I'm encouraging the, the beginning to maybe start to think that there's more in there 
because there's an intended output, there's an intended intention, and and what is it we are being intentional about? And right now, I'm asking, what do you do before the conversation? And and that's not to not to say right, wrong, anything else. It's just to say before we enter it, how intentional are we? And you know, I, I live by some very very strict intentionalities, and you know, there's there's a there's five of them that I live by. And if I don't fit into this realm, and, and as, I, as I go through these, I, I encourage you guys to tell me if there's something I've forgotten, because uh, to me, that's, that's always the beauty of this. It's never, it's never set in stone. There's no perfect way to communicate. There's, there's nothing but clarity and, and goals. And, and so when I enter a conversation, I'm either there to create or strengthen a connection. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm there to foster a relationship. I'm here to be, I'm here to be with that person to know who they are, know where they're going. And, and I'm going to say that in most cases, there's about a 90 percenter. Most cases, when we enter conversation, it's for relationship. So if it's not for relationship, the next thing I think about is it to clarify values. You know, is there something that we're diving into? Is there something we need clarity around? Is there, is there an obstacle that we're getting over? In, in the values that are either my own values or the company values. So the next one is expressing mission or my vision. Am I talking about where we're going? Am I talking about what we're doing? Because if I'm talking about those things, I wanna be clear with them. And, and if I'm interrupting something that's happened to align it, I have to, I have to do that intentionally because if I don't, all kinds of things will show up out of that. So aligning mission and vision, clarification, perhaps I heard something I didn't understand. Perhaps I need to make sure that what I said is what they received. I always call that a feedback loop. I asked somebody to go out, grab keys for the blue Taurus. Just so happens we have four in the lot. Which blue Taurus am I talking about? Okay, we're going to go grab that. Oh, you know what? Do, do you know which one it is? Or how do I get them to respond to me in a way that they can? Clarification. Sometimes it's to demonstrate respect. And the reason I point these out is entering a conversation blindly without without understanding why you're entering that conversation or having a specific reason for it you're walking into a gunfight without a gun you're you're walking in unprepared and you're unprepared for the outcome because you're not focused and all kinds of things show up when we do that so so what other things, and this is a, a curiosity of mine, what other things show up for you for intention when it comes to conversation? What other intentions are actually there that I didn't mention? Because there's, there's a whole list of them. And I'm going to say that in a healthy relationship or in a relationship even in the work environment, they're going to breed very toxic things. And I, I, wonder, I wonder if any of you can identify what those are. How about, what about getting clarity from the other person's uh, point of view or perspective, learning how they feel about something, not necessarily mm. being clear about how, how you're, what you feel, but understanding their perspective better. Yeah. Seek to understand always. It's clarity. It's the same thing. I didn't use it as a, an example, but it's the same thing. You're, you're seeking to understand them rather than be understood. And again, it gets back to the listening, right? I think another thing uh, is that when you meet with somebody, there's a fear factor and you want to debunk the fear, right? It could be a fear on my part as well as a fear on their part. Well, what's going to happen here? You know, what, what, what is he doing? What, what's, what's the result here? So if you can diffuse that fear, that's an intention to make it 
less fearful. Strength and connection, right? Right. Yeah, you're going into strength and connection. So there's one that there's one that stands out to me that I see constantly, and we call that manipulation, right? I'm entering in, I am entering in communication to get something from or out of you, right? I'm sure nobody in here has ever done that, right? <laughs> Never been there, don't even know what it is. Um, but but if you're not if you're not checking yourself. And you're, and you're not intentional about your conversation, how easy is it to walk into a manipulative role? My objective is this. I don't care how it aligns with you because I need to get it done. I see lots of people prepare for conversations in that order. I need this. Therefore, I will say this. You will do this. Then they go to the feedback. Did you hear what I said? So is there another way to do that? I mean, I think it's important to think it through, like you said, ahead of time. And it's a lot easier if you're able to get their buy-in, right? If you could explain to them, hey, this is why why it's important. This is how it's going to help the company. This is how it's going to benefit you. Yeah, there's that mutual benefit, right? Yeah, if there's If there's no benefit to them, which it would be really hard for me to believe in most cases there's not, um, then it's then it is pure manipulation, right? You know, sometimes the benefit might just be they're going to paycheck. That's okay. But if you're pushing past that, what other things are going to show up? What's going to happen to the workplace relationship? What's going to happen to the things that are valuable to you? You know, and, and we haven't even started the conversation yet. You know, this, is, this is still before the conversation happens. This is that 350 word space before you say, hi, how are you doing? I'd like to buy a coffee. How's your day today? Why did I even say that? Oh, wait, I'm establishing, I'm creating connection. Imagine that. So the... The, the area of communication, it's not always as simple as it seems. So, so once, we, once we've gotten intentional about what we're doing, I like to ask what actually happens next. You get the courage to go talk to them. <laughs> Maybe, right? Maybe. But yeah. before you even talk to them, is there anything going on in your head? Again, I like to talk about that 350 word space, right? What there the, any... what... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead I was going to say, what might their responses be? You know, if I present this, what are some of the possible, you know, responses? And then how would you address each of those handful of responses you may get? Yeah, you're preparing, you're, you're building a story before the conversation, right? Yeah, how does that, so how does that story, before you even open your mouth, so you're intentional about where you're going, and then a story shows up in your head, right? And let's let's say that story is, Joe, my technician, has screwed up seven cars in four weeks. And he's walking up here to talk to me about something. I wonder what he screwed up now. What's that conversation going to look like? It could get disjointed real quick. You know, it could get out of control. And now what are you going to do, right? Yeah, the, the story plays so much into this, right? And this, again, the conversation hasn't even started. We've just created something in our head before it even begins. And I mean, I've, I've never done this, but I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> My wife spends too much money. Your husband spends too much money. Either way, right? What happens when they come to talk to you about a bill? 
What's, what does that communication look like? Are you able to have communication at that point? What do you think, anybody? You have to have good control over yourself to be able to have that conver any conversation without letting your emotions take effect, affect it. What well, is that's interesting. So good control over yourself. So has any, anybody in here have like perfect willpower? Hmm. Nope. <laughs> so, so I mean, I, I, I think, you know, interesting, interesting way to approach it, but there's a lot of failure that can happen in that, isn't there, Micah? Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, so what if, what if willpower wasn't the answer? What, what other options do we have? Because I, I think willpower is great until it isn't. And when it isn't, all kinds of stuff happens, right? Stuff that we don't intend, stuff that we don't want. Um, relationships get damaged, people, people end up leaving, um, you know, will, willpower. And I, and I'm, I'm well known to be able to grind through just about anything. And, uh, you know, and, and actually my, my fishing partner here that I was talking to earlier, we were talking about willpower. And when you get tired, when the same things show up, when life takes the nasty turn again and again, that willpower, it's like that, it's like your battery just gets depleted and depleted and depleted. And then all of a sudden, I can't believe you're doing it again. And communication doesn't happen. It just stops before it even starts. Because Joe's already screwed up seven cars. Now it's number eight. Never mind that he's coming up to tell you he's got a defective part. Are you going to hear him? Yeah, I just screw the part up. No, I'm telling you, it came out of the box like that. Yeah, you probably dropped it. And we haven't even started the conversation yet. Yeah, communication is interesting. So if it wasn't about willpower, Micah, what else, what else do you think you might have in there? What, what else would be in that tank? Uh, no one to be quiet and don't say anything. Like I'll, that's when I'll circle back around to it sometime. <laughs> now's for, not, now's not the right time. Oh yeah, boy, isn't that a big one, right? Just being able to look over and say, yeah, probably not right now. But but what if what if it's more about the story that you tell, it's the things that we're making up before we start the conversation, right? You know, and again, I, I started this whole conversation about intentionality, right? Are we aware enough to even notice the story that's in there? That 350 word space, are you aware enough to notice that there's a whole different train of thought going on in your head than the objective of what you thought you were talking about? And we all do it. I mean, I'm, I'm terrible for it. I, I, I tell the story before someone even opens their mouth. I tell it sometimes before I even meet them. I look at the big earrings and gauges and the tattoos, and I already know what's coming out, right? I'm sure. So I've already told the story. And uh, the one thing that I re I'll never forget this. Uh, I think I was, I was 19. You know, I was, I was always a little on the edge of the curve in my, you know, in the automotive shop. And so I, I was working as a, a diagnostic tech uh, at 19 at the deal at a Ford dealership. And this is, I get to date myself here. This is in the early nineties and I'm working on a, I'm working on a Ford Bronco too. You know, again, and the thing's not very old. So this, this will tell you something as well. And, uh, and I mean, I've got, I've probably got eight or 10 hours of this thing. It's a no start. It's just kicked my butt up one side and down the other. And, uh, we hired this temporary help guy and, uh, you know, one of those typical day laborers comes through and I, I think I could still smell the alcohol in his breath that morning. And uh, he walks by and he says, hey, I think your, your timing chain jumped. 2-9, Bronco 2. I don't know if any, of, any of you are familiar. There's not really a timing chain to jump. It just doesn't happen, right? And the story in my head was, this guy's a drunk. He doesn't know what he's talking about. 
completely dismissed it. And guess what? 10 hours later, I finally decided to take the timing cover off it because it sounded just like that. I actually got it to start when I advanced the distributor. If anybody, anybody, everybody here is old enough to know what a distributor is. Advanced the distributor, I kind of got it to run. I thought, man, maybe, you know, maybe it is jump time. Of course, pulled the front cover off. Mark's lined up and I went, man, I knew there's no way it was this. And uh, about 10 minutes later, I, I got to thinking again and I, I pulled the bolt out only to find the keyway shear on the camshaft. And what if I hadn't made that story up in my head that he was a drunk, that he didn't know what he was talking about, that he didn't have the experience? How different would that have gone for me? Are those stories powerful? That's what I, that's what I ask. And do they rule your life? Because those stories make the difference of what you accept or don't accept, how you engage the conversation or how you don't. And for me, it cost me about 15 hours in that, in that little debacle, but I learned from it. So if it's not willpower, what, what is it that, uh, that brings us there? Part of knowing that we don't know everything. Man, I like that one. That's good. So not knowing that we don't know things, right? Knowing that everything that uh, is said may or may not be. What about getting? What about getting curious? You know, the first thing I always say: the first thing is being aware that there is a sub story there, right? That there is something else going on in those 350 word space. There's a conversation about the conversation and, and the conversation about the conversation, even before the conversation starts is how the conversation will go. So if, if I can open my eyes, open my ears and ask myself, what is the story? I can stay curious to it instead of being slave to it. How might that change the outcome? Oh, you know what? He has screwed up seven cars and they were pretty decent comebacks. But can I stay open to the conversation with him right now to hear what he has to say? Or even one further. You know, this is my, my favorite, even before they start. As soon as I hear the, as soon as I hear the phrase, he always, or he never, she always, she never. Anybody know what, anybody know what you do anytime you hear that? If you hear yourself say that, does anybody know what you do? Yeah. Mm -mm. Just kind of putting that bias out there right at the beginning. So you're not going to be very open to understand the conversation you already kind of have your mind made up well if i say gary always shows up late to the showcase the first the first problem is nobody always does anything right so if i hear always or never i know i'm full of it it's a it's self-deceit right I've already started it off in a way that it, it, it's on a bad foot to begin with. It can't, it, you, you got to pull it back. I hear, I hear anybody say, I always, I'm like, oh, really? Really? And, and let me guess, you never. Mm -hmm. When I hear myself say it, I know there's a problem, right? Again, I point it out because the only way to get, the only way to get serious in this and actually pay attention to your conversation is to be curious about what you're thinking. So those triggers, he always, she always, she never, she always. Instant. Oh, well, wait, why am I thinking that? Yeah, he always screws the cars up. Oh, man, no, he fixed, he had seven bad ones, but I just 
28 that went out correctly. So let's, let's think about that. I, I know another instructor, he always, he always points out the blue dot on the wall, right? You got a perfectly painted wall, but all I can see is the blue dot. Just that one little spot that isn't painted right. And there's always a spot left on those walls after he paints them. Really? And again, we haven't even started the conversation, right? These are all just the precursors to getting into it before we even open our mouth this conversation before the conversation that's all happening here and this is all happening in a matter of seconds right but they they define the outcome of where we're going hmm. success or failure right what do you think So does that conversation before the conversation taint the intentionality? Well, it could. I mean, you can go bias either way. What if, what if I walk in and I say, my kids never had a problem. My kid's always right. And your kid's sitting in the principal's office. <laughs> Man, my kid, did, my kid would never do that. <laughs> guess, guess what? Little Jimmy has, a, has an issue. But he, he'd never do that. And I'm sure anybody who's a parent has never been in that situation. But I'm just, I'm speaking hypothetically. So how are you going to show up? You know, so, so I, I point this out because we're, we're getting ready to walk into the conversation, right? So, so now that I'm in the conversation, what am, what am I thinking about next? And I know nobody in here ever does this, but the next thing is, what do I look like in this conversation? Now that we're talking, I'm thinking about what I look like, right? So, so am I speaking to intentionality or am I speaking to image or perception? You know, you're in a room full of people. I mean, I'll use this right here. Do I want to open this door and look like a JA? I don't. So, so what's happening in that 350 word space right now? What am I thinking about? What are you thinking about, about yourself as it pertains to the conversation? For me, that's always a big one, definitely. The perception, right? Mm -hmm. I think about that a lot before conversations and, and <clears throat> trying to control that maybe too much, you know? Just being a little bit vulnerable and say what needs to be said and listen to what, what comes back. Yeah, how do, how do you think that affects the way you hear? makes it difficult because I'm always thinking about what's been said and and did that come across right did I say that right is it you know instead of listening to what the feedback is mm -hmm. yeah and and you know I'm gonna be if I can be frank here if I if I step on you let me know but but you're female in a male business right so perception probably matters more to you than it might to a male in the same spot, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. what, if they, what if they think I don't know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I had to get over that early. <laughs> I'm still not over it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But how different do you think your conversation would look if you didn't worry about that? Yeah, that, what that if, is the... Yeah, that's definitely the piece that, that is, it, it leaves you, leaves me, I feel a little vulnerable, but I have to be willing to do that because I'm surrounded by a great team and they, they, you know, they can fill in the gaps, right? Because I don't know this industry like they do. So that is definitely something I, I, I work on all the time. <laughs> yeah, what, what if you were completely unknowledgeable? How would that, how would that affect you? What would that look like? I, I guess I focus less on the, the knowledge and more on the 
the the team and and where we want to go and lean on lean on their expertise really that's what i that's what i've had to do because this isn't my area of expertise my 26 years before this was not in this field so i've definitely had to learn to do that what what is your strength where where did you uh spend most of your time previously um i was actually in a, in a very male um dominated industry before i was in it so mm. uh, i was a liaison liaison between business and it so i didn't know how to program anything or do anything like that but i i knew how to communicate so i'm always working on my communication um because that seems to be where things break down the most right um so people can have good intent um, but the way things are delivered or or said or heard um, can definitely break that down in in ways that you don't intend so communication is something i'm always working on so this was definitely something that um i'm 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 happy to hear and and listen to how other people do it um and and what works well and maybe things that that i think i'm doing well but maybe on the other end aren't being heard the same way that i intend them to be so yeah this, that was kind of my intent in, in joining this call today <laughs> talk about intent <laughs> you, get, you get what you look for right yeah have you, have you ever heard that before yeah you know if you set your intention you're going to find what you look for and and that's critical you know so yeah, yeah I, pre I appreciate that that uh, there's there's some vulnerability in what you just said for sure and uh for sure you know it takes it takes um takes a backbone to walk into that and uh you know i i can't i can't help but wonder um would you would you think your employees would say that you are vulnerable to that in the in the way that uh, they can hear you and you can listen to them i think so yeah yeah i think so and what what would you use what would be a way to what would be a way to what would be an output that you could measure that um, just that there's conversation going on, right? So um, if, if I weren't open to it, then people would be less likely to, to come with suggestions or even complaints, right? Um, that if, the, if that communication isn't there, um, you end up speaking a lot, but not hearing anything coming back. So, um, you know, being, being um, aware that, um, you know, in the beginning, I was very, I would say very, uh, um, like, I didn't know I had an ego. I learned quickly, I do. Um, so, you know, recognizing that a little early on with the, the people that are closest to my husband, my, my store manager, you know, the people I talk to every day um, has helped me kind of step back and realize that, you know, I have my strengths, but they have theirs. So between all of us, we, we can we can do what we need to do. Um, so just hearing that continual conversation back and forth, and we don't always agree, but we can have the conversation. So that's kind of the, I guess, the proof in the pudding that, that I'm doing some things right, not perfect, but making progress. Yeah, that's awesome. That is that is great. That is great clarity. Thank you, Stacy. I really appreciate that. Yeah, the I, I always say when it comes to anything that you want feedback on, look at the results. And the results will tell you everything. If you want to know what your intentions are, look at the results. If your intention is to be a good communicator, you'll see the things that you ask for happen. If, you're, if your intention is to be a great leader, you'll see the vision and the mission that you set. If, you're, if your intention is to make lots of money, you're going to see lots of money. If your intention is to care for other people, you're going to see that show up. Always look at the results. And I love, Stacy how you, you went right there. You said, you said what I, I love to hear, which is people respond to me. People aren't afraid to talk to me. People bring me their problems. And if I want to know if I'm a good communicator, then I would look for openness. I would look for willingness to hear. I would look for people that are having conversations with me. Those would be the results, right? A good, commuter would, a good communicator would have those things show up. The results, results never lie. They always, they always paint the picture for you. So 
Stacy, thank you. That's really good. So, so here we are. We we've got intention coming into the conversation. We're hearing our own story about the conversation before the conversation happens. But then the conversation happens. And I begin to think about how am I showing up in this conversation? Or the next one, how are they showing up in the conversation? What judgments do I begin to pass in that conversation? And go back to the guy who I talked about at 19, temporary help. He talked to me and I remember in the conversation thinking, I wish this guy just closed his mouth. I'm drawing judgments right there. How do I hear that? How do I hear my own about me? How do I hear that everything I'm saying and, and I say this, are we, are we seeking to understand or are we seeking to respond? If I'm seeking to respond, I'm worried about myself or them. I'm projecting. And I'm spending the entire time of that 350 projecting instead of hearing. And if I'm not hearing, what am I missing? Am I missing an opportunity? Am I missing a potential consequence? Am I missing perhaps an employee that's on the verge of suicide because I didn't listen. And these are, and these are real things. Listening isn't just about what's being said. It's about hearing what's in between the words being said. It's about understanding what they're pointing at, what they're driving to. Listening is a lot more than the words. Listening, listening, I often say, is hearing the heart of the person that you're talking to. But if I'm listening to respond, I'm just coming up with words to make myself look better, maybe to prop them up, maybe tear them down, whatever that might be. But again, the intentionality isn't there. It's also, I think, important to put put yourself in their shoes while they're talking, not just that's and try to see from their point because it, it, I may never have experienced what they're talking about, and I haven't been there going that, that doesn't make sense. But again, I don't know everything, and plus, I don't yeah. talk a whole lot, so I listen more than I talk. <laughs> but you call, that's called empathetic listening, right? Put yourself in their shoes. Look around you. Look at it as they would see it, right? And that's and that's even where we started, right? Removing that story and attempting to create the story they have. And and Micah, how would you how would you get closer to the story that they have if you had to be intentional about that? How would you get closer to it? Um, I, I ask questions, you know, to try to understand where they're where they're at and where they're coming from. Um, not necessarily speak and tell them my thoughts, but ask questions, try to get their side of it, their, their perspective on it. Yeah, listen, you have to listen to them, right? Yeah, you to have be able to, to ask questions, you got to listen. So, yeah. yeah, and and again, it's clearing out the I'm worried about me, I'm worried about them. Getting back to that neutral position of what is it you're saying? And and that's that's where again I talked about the feedback loop earlier. And it just out of curiosity, we got three of us in the room, four of us including me. Um, who in here actively uses what we call a feedback loop? I try to. I miss sorry, I was gonna say I missed part of that conversation. I was having some technical difficulties, but a feedback mm -hmm. loop to me is um, listening to what they said and then repeating back to them, or if you don't understand, asking the questions um, to help understand where what they're where they're coming from. 
and and I definitely uh, can use some work on this one. My husband is really good at it. He's been in sales his whole life, so he just like naturally does it. And I I just watch him, and I'm like, wow, we got like 50 more things out of that conversation than I would have. So it's just learning how to use that loop. I'm 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 a little rusty at it, and I'm I'm working on it. But um, the other thing my store manager does a lot is it's what people don't say a lot of times that is more important than what they do say. So asking those questions kind of pulls that out of them a little bit. What are they not willing to put out there? I often, I often dig into because whatever they're not willing to put in there, they're protecting. So then the question is when you're, when you're empathetically listening, why don't they want to voice it? It's not even about, it's not even about what it is. It's about the why behind it. And the only way you can hear that is what you just said to repeat it back. What I heard you say was, and Stacy, what I heard you say there is that you need to be intentional about how you're listening to them. And you pointed out that your husband who's in sales does a great job of it. And my guess would be that he would have trouble selling the product that he sells if he wasn't. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so his livelihood depends on it, right? Yeah. Yep. Very perceptive. Mm -hmm. And, and I would, I would even, you know, to kind of bring this all in tight, I would say that all of us, our lives, our employees' lives depend on the same thing, right? You know, as leaders in our organization, as, as the people in charge, what really matters is hearing those around us for everything that they have for hearing what it is they may not intend to say, but yet we're willing to ask. And and we're not in the process protecting ourselves or judging them. We're using that 350 word space to hear what's being said, to look at the statements being made instead of, I wonder how I'm showing up. I wonder what they think of me. And there's real power in that. Do we have any we have any other thoughts or questions before we before we put a bow on it? Besides the feedback loop, is there anything that you've been able to do or Micah you've been able to do or Gary that you've been able to do to kind of get past the um what you just said, right? You're already thinking in your head, kind of judging the conversation or um putting your own spin on it to get past that. Um, I, I feel like I'm a decent listener. You know, I'm not a great listener, but um, hearing what they're actually saying, any, any besides the feedback loop, asking questions, I don't, I, sometimes I struggle with the right questions to even ask, you know? Um, I'm not a natural at it. I don't think anybody's natural. I think it's work. And I think that's why it's, it's such a persistent problem. I don't care what organization I go into, this shows up and the, I don't like to call myself an advice giver, but what I found that works for me is to remain curious and to understand. That's why I said that always, the never, to hear the stories before they take control of my thought. If, if I hear, and you know, when I'm in front of a room and I, I realize that things didn't show up the way that my original intent was, the first question I ask is, where did I get in the way? Where did I get in the way? And that's a responsibility piece, right? Because you're responsible. And, and I, I say this over and over. It only takes one person to influence or change a relationship. It doesn't take two. So I am always responsible for the conversation. I'm always responsible for the result because I have all the tools at my disposal. So being aware of it, not being a slave to it, and owning it. And, and being willing to be weak and vulnerable. And, and you know, I, 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 I'll share one little story here. My uh, the friend who I'm fishing with, he's, uh, he's actually, he's a mentor. He's a friend. He's my bookkeeper. Um, I've known him for 20 some years. And I would tell you of, of the people I've met in my life, he's in the top one to 2% for raw intelligence. 
and you will never meet a person who asks more questions than him. Yep. And I had somebody one time say to me, well, what kind of person asks that many questions? Somebody who wants to be clear. Somebody who understands the cost of not being clear. So how can we all be that curious in communication, in achieving the result that we want and doing it through intention? So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that answers your question to some degree. I don't think there's a pattern. I, w I wish there was, but I think it's intentionality and, and being quick to realize when we're triggered, when something shows up that, sh that otherwise doesn't need to be there and being willing to challenge yourself to it, being willing to look like a fool to ask the question, right? One thing, that, one thing that helps me when I'm dealing with people is I, I know it sounds funny. I stare at their mouth because that's the words coming out of their mouth. And, and you can see them talking and what they're saying. So that helps me. Otherwise, if I start looking at the computer, like on this, the Zoom, you look at the camera, I'm not paying attention to the person speaking. But when you're staring at their mouth while they're talking, it's like those words are coming right at me. So. Focus, yeah. Love it. Well, well, right, Stacy, thank nice you. <laughs> and I'm, I'm covering my mouth around you now. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I do want to say thank you. Um, it has been my pleasure and uh, honor to be here. And I really hope I brought something that was uh, that was of uh, importance to you and is usable in your life. So that's my intent. Thanks, boy. Right. Enjoy Don't your forget. fishing. One week from now, we're back on with Brian, and he's going to go a little different topic, but uh, bring your questions and your curiosity. And uh, and Micah, I'll just look at people's mouths from now on instead of look at their eyes. How's that? That's, that's a good tip. Yeah, like just that. don't, don't go Safety, much lower than the, here. Don't go lower than the mouth. You'll get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. For sure. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. For it. Communication. Where do you find yourself in communication? Do you find yourself always correct? Do you find yourself interrupted? Do you find yourself constantly going back to see if your message has been heard? Or do you find yourself constantly fixing problems because you weren't heard? What are the things that get in your way? What are the things that stop you from getting your message across to other people? That's what we're talking about. We're talking about how you effectively get your message across to others and how you hear the message they're bringing to you. Because each side matters. And if you're constantly pushing, there's no chance to find out what's been heard or what's needed, what is wanted and needed. So I encourage you to listen, hear what we had to talk about, and hear how more effective communication can bring more productivity and freedom to your life. Is that long enough? Do you feel like you're not heard? Do you feel like you're constantly repeating yourself? Do you feel like everyone around you doesn't do the things that they should do? Do you feel like you explain it and they fail anyway? Do you feel like the entire room around you doesn't understand what you need to get done? This is communication. And if you'd like to know that there is perhaps a better way to do it, why don't you come tune in and listen? I thank you for listening to this video. I thank you for attending this class today with Brian Kelly. Remember, he's a shop owner just like you, but he never goes to the shop. The shop runs without him because of his leadership style and how he leads his team four and a half hours away from where the shop is located. Hey, that's why if I was a shop owner, I wanted to know what Brian Kelly knows so I can apply it to my business. Now, next Tuesday, we're going to have number two session with Brian. 
And he's going to bring in some more interesting topics that you can learn as a leader. Today's topic was communication. So guys and gals, tune in, look for the Zoom link. It's right below you here. Get signed up and come back next Tuesday. Talk to you then. Have a great day. Bye-bye.